go over the early stages of embryogenesis. So what is going to be happening to that fertilized cell as it starts to develop into what will eventually become a fetus? All right, so here's how this process works. We start with our fertilized egg, right? And it's surrounded by this glycoprotein coat that's called the zona pellicida. Write that in here quickly. And here's the cell membrane of our egg. The sperm has penetrated that zona pellicida and it's entered into the egg. And its genetic material has then fused with the genetic material of the egg. So basically we've taken 23 chromosomes from sperm, the 23 chromosomes from the egg, and we've merged them together. And this new fertilized cell is now called a zygote. And this is going to be day one, really, of embryosis or the development of the embryo. Now, what's going to happen next is that this cell, this zygote, is going to go through a series of very rapid cell divisions. Okay, so we're still going to have our zona pellicida here, and it's kind of important to keep that in mind because it's going to play a very important role later when we talk about it but this cell is going to divide from one cell into two from two cells into four from four into eight from eight to sixteen and then from sixteen to thirty two right so we're going to go up we can not draw any more from 4 to 2 to 4 to 8 to 16 to 32. Right, so we just got all kinds of cells. Now, this whole process here, this process of rapid cell division, is called cleavage. And what's interesting about cleavage is that even though we have all of these cells being duplicated, our cell, our ball, and it's actually a ball of cells, like a sphere of cells, it doesn't get any bigger. It stays the same size. It's just that we're increasing the amount of cells that are in there. And so cleavage is going to occur. And when we get to the 32 cell mass of, of cells, starting to look a little bit differently, it actually kind of looks like a, a bean or a mulberry which is what the greek word for it is and so we give it a different name and so this is called a morula and so basically we've gone from the zygote from day one into a 32 or greater mass of cells called the morula so again this process is called cleavage now we have our morula right so we're going to start here with our morula again and I'm not going to draw the exact amount of cells, you'll get the idea. But once we get to the morula, something very interesting starts to happen. Um, first of all, the cells are kind of going to start to squeeze together in the middle of this zona pellicida. So, we, you know, we still have the zona. The cells are kind of going to squeeze together here in the inside, and we call this compactation. And then also, the cells are going to start to become a little different from each other. So we're going to have a different kind of layer, I'll draw it a different color on the outside, of cells. These cells are a little bit different, and this process is called differentiation. And so we end up now with this cell that has this layer of cells on the outside, and this layer, or this mass of cells on the inside, and these cells are all a little bit different from each other. Now, we give these different cells a name. So these layers on the outside are going to be called trophoblasts, and the layers on the inside are going to be called embryoblasts. And so we're going to continue with this process, and we'll move on to the next stage, and we'll draw our zona pellicula here again. Let's kind of draw our arrow here. Something interesting is going to start to happen is that those cells in the middle, they're going to start to clump even more. In fact, they clump so much that they all cluster at one end, leaving a little cavity on the other end. So here's our tropoblast again. Kind of put that right there. Here's our embryoblast. And now we have this cavity. And this cavity is called the blastocele. And this blastocele is filled with fluid. And now that this 
cell, again, looks a little bit different than the cells before it, we're going to give it its own name, which is called a blastocyst. So a blastocyst will basically be where the trophoblast and the embryoblast exist, and there's this cavity in the middle filled with fluid called a blastocele. And this process then is called blastulation. So basically going from the morula to the blastocyst. Now, the other thing that happens in blastulation is that this zona pellicida is gonna start to like disintegrate or start to break apart. You know, our cells can't be stuck in that in that zona pellicida forever, so eventually we're going to end up losing it completely. So I'm going to draw my blastocyst here then, without it's naked, without the zona pellicida around it. So we got our tropoblast cells, right? And then something interesting is going to happen. These cells are going to kind of move. The inner mass cells are going to move then. And they're going to form another cavity, which is going to be called the amniotic cavity. And eventually, the amniotic cavity is going to be where that embryo or that fetus is going to float around and grow and develop. Also, your inner mass cells are going to start to differentiate even more too. And it's going to form another layer of cells here, cells that are just slightly different than the layers that were before it. We now have this two-layer structure. This layer of cells is called the hypoblast, and this layer of cells is called the epiblast. Now, at this point, we're completely free of that zona pellicida, which is going to allow this mass of cells to be able to be implanted into the uterine wall. So we still haven't actually implanted, these cells haven't actually implanted themselves into the uterine wall yet. So we're going to focus on this ball of cells here. And I, again, want to just stress to you that this is a ball of cells. It's not flat like we have it drawn here. It's a three-dimensional and sphere nature. So think of it like an actual ball or like a melon. And I'm kind of going to take a big knife, cut the melon like this, and we'll erase the top of our melon here. So we kind of have this structure that looks like this with this kind of flat circle. And kind of picture this as being like a pancake, right? Right on top of this flat circle is what this pancake. And that's basically what we got here with our blastocyst and this forming layer of epiblasts and hypoblasts. It's really a pancake. It's not a two-dimensional disc of tissue. It's a three-dimensional disc. So we're going to draw this again, but we're going to draw our pancake of epiblasts and hypoblasts. So we're going to take this part here. And we'll kind of draw it out. It's got our two layers, right? And we call this structure, and it's really important in embryology, we call it the bilaminar disc. This formation of the primitive streak. So kind of think of it like if this was kind of our pancake and I put one drop of syrup on top of the pancake and then it's going to spread all over, right? So that drop is this primitive streak. And this primitive streak and the formation of it marks the beginning of our next stage of embryogenesis, which is called gastrulation. And gastrulation is going to be the formation of three germ layers, which will eventually become all the different organs in our bodies. What that primitive streak actually is, it's just a site where the cells in this epiblast layer of our bilaminar disc are going to start to migrate. So here, I'll draw a path of the migrating cells. They keep themselves right at the primitive streak, and then they start to burrow their way down into the bilaminar disc. So they would kind of, cells would kind of come down in here and come down in here and come down in here. And so they kind of bury themselves into that bilaminar disc. And they just kind of go all over the place here. But it happens from this spot here, which is the primitive streak. So all the cells migrate out from the primitive streak. And we can see that our structure has changed a little bit. Now, instead of having two layers, one layer of epiblast and one layer of hypoblast, all of those migrating cells now have differentiated even further so they become even more specific and we're left with a layer of cells on top a middle layer of cells as they go into the body of the bilaminar disc and we start to have a lower layer of cells down in here these are called germ layers so instead of being called the epiblast and hypoblast we're going to have layers that are called the ectoderm 
the mesoderm, and the endoderm. And remember that this process then is called gastrulation. Once our three layers are formed, we can move on to the next step of embryogenesis, which is called neurulation, right? So each of these, your ectoderm is going to end up becoming your nervous system and some parts of your integumentary system. Your mesoderm will become your bones and your muscles. Your endoderm will end up forming um, skin and your digestive tract. So neurulation is the next step or the final step of early embryogenesis that we're going to talk about. And that's going to look specifically at the layer of ectoderm that is on the top. So I redrew my three germ layers here, right? The ectoderm is on top, the mesoderm is in the middle, and then the endoderm is on the end. And we are going to go through a process called neurulation, which neuro, you should know or think of the brain or spinal cord. This is going to be the formation of our neural system, and it's the final stage in early embryogenesis. We're going to see further differentiation of cells, right? So right in the middle, we're going to get a core that starts to form. And But what that really is underneath where the primitive streak was, mesoderm cells are differentiating into a cord structure that's called a notochord. Now in humans, the notochord doesn't go on to do a whole lot, but it does form part of the intervertebral disc. Now this differentiated bit of mesoderm actually induces a change in the ectoderm above it. And I'll draw this as kind of a thickening of the ectoderm right here. And it's kind of plate-like when we look at it. So what we call that then is the neural plate. Now we have our notochord formed and we have our neural plate formed. The next thing that happens is we'll redraw our three layers here, our ectoderm, our mesoderm, and our endoderm. And here at the bottom, we have our notochord forming within our mesoderm. And right above it, those neural plate cells actually start to divide into the mesoderm. And those neural plate cells dive in and they start to form a ring structure. And actually, since this is a three-dimensional ring, the ring is more like a tube. So you can picture this tube going off into the rest of the mesoderm. And this becomes known as the neural tube. Now, this isn't a perfect process as the neural tube is zipping up from one end of the pancake to the other. Little cells are breaking off from the ectoderm and going into the mesoderm. These cells are called the neural crust cells. Once the neural tube and the neural crust cells are formed, this is the end of early embryogenesis, is this formation of the neural tube and the neural crust cells. The neural crust cells will eventually become part of our peripheral system, our peripheral nervous system. The neural tubes then will further develop into becoming our brain and spinal cord.